This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Let's make a board. So I've been wanting to do a board build on the channel for quite a while now, and I was really uh, just waiting for the ideal game system to come along that would necessitate the building, the production time, a video, and actually keeping the board. That's the main issue when it comes to building boards for me, is they're great to look at, they're great to play on. But with the amount of time I actually get to play games, where the fuck do I keep it in the interim? So for a while, I've been wanting to do a skirmish board because they're small, easy to store, and yeah, and recently getting into the newish kill team that's out. I think it's about time I did a board build. Let's see what we can do. With very little money, hardware store materials, and the bare basics of the kill team cheapo edition. Cheapo! Right, let's get to it. The main chassis of our board is built from these plastic right angle things that I found in my local hardware shop in town. I don't know what they are, I don't know what the fuck they do but right now they are ideal for our framework. The body of the board is built from very, very cheap insulation foam. This stuff isn't nice enough to carve things into and it's exactly the kill team board size specified in the manual. So after years of them doing nothing, it's getting its time to shine today. While I was almost tempted to cut and measure these strips properly, instinct took over and my fuck it, that'll do mindset came in. Cork, cock, cork. Cork is flexible, nuts and bolts, easily available, and most importantly, dirt cheap. Never actually used it before, but for some reason, I seem to have 50 tubes of this stuff lying around various rooms in the building. I'll figure it's probably time to load this up and see what it can do. It's important when adding obstacles and height at this stage to factor in your miniature's height. I'm building a trench system here, so I want my dudes to be able to shoot over the top from cover while they're in it. I'm keeping them a little lower than I expect because the ground cover and the ground formation is going to add some height to it later on. So the framework of the board is done. The plastic strips are a little bit flexible, but I imagine once I heap a load of shit on top of this, it will get less flexible. As long as I deliberately don't bend it and smash it around, I think it will be okay. So what I've gone for, unlike my previous board builds, which have always been very detail and just heavy in terms of stuff to look at, they've been more diorama themed, but that has often impacted playability. This time, I'm not about that. I want to keep it way more simple, uh, although I do want it to have some interesting features built into it. I see with a lot of boards, they are too plain, and you know, that's great because you can put modular stuff on, you could just put like ruins on and shit, but at that point you might as well have not made a board, you could just use a battle mat. Uh, here I am going to build the majority of the terrain features in, you can put little stuff on like vehicles as terrain or whatever, however the main feature for this is going to be that at one end we have part, like a, a subsection of a trench. It's not a particularly deep trench because I want a shallow format board, I don't want this to be too deep and take up too much space and get bumped around. And also because one of the strips I bought, the last one they had in stock, 
was way too high, so the board was going to be high at one end. So I thought, ah, I'll, I'll work a, a trench into it and have one end of the board slightly higher, uh, which is fine. You just work with what you can get in terms of material. And depending which way you play on the board, you can really have uh, an attacker-defender dynamic that will be quite interesting, I think. So next, I just need to mix up some sculptor mold, ghetto style homebrew sculptor mold, and then do a base layer on the entire board. It normally goes off in about 20 minutes, but I'm gonna leave it overnight because I realized I left all of my kill team terrain elements at home. Fucking wicked, right, let's crack on. Sculpting time. And speaking of sculpting, isn't it about time you thought about sculpting your very first website? You know, in the olden days, the great sculptors of the world, Michelangelo, Donatello, Da Vinci. Machines that fly through the air. They used to carve their websites out of stone with primitive tools. Fast forward to 2022, and I think it's safe to say we've had a little bit of a renaissance in web design. With the browser-based tools provided by Squarespace, you too can follow the footsteps of the greats and start building your website today. I've been working on the MS Paints website and using a selection of easy to modify presets, I've been able to make the website my own. With a welcome page telling people what MS Paints is all about, briefly, a page covering my story and how multiple sclerosis affects my hobby life, and a page introducing the MS Paints team. If you want to get started with your first website, head to squarespace.com forward slash MS Paints to save 10% off your first purchase of a website subscription or domain using the code MS Paints. And now, back to the video. Sorry, I'm not putting this on my voices. I've been doing voices for a kid's show this morning. I'm... Cool to mod you can pick up from a lot of different places and it's got different names. Geek Gaming Scenics calls it Modeling Compound, I believe. Uh, the traditional railway brand is sculptor mold however i do make my own shredded newspaper plaster and water you can if you have a craft shop nearby pick up some mod rock i believe it's called which is essentially like uh, web or bandages that are mixed with plaster you dip those in water you lay them on a surface and they go rock fucking solid mod rock might be the way to go if you want to keep things a little less messy arse falls out of my organization skills. Box I want is at the bottom. Fucked it. Here's where we get, oh brilliant, oh brilliant. 200 zombies on the floor. 1993 AMT Deep Space Nine model kit because of course, of course. Celts and Byzantines, whatever the fuck that means. I think my dad must have left that. What the fuck? Star Wars Shadow of the Empire uh, AMT Virago model kit. Of course, of course. Okay, original Kill Team starter set. Okay, let's see if there's any, any cheeky terrain in there. When it comes to place and terrain, asymmetry is the spice of life. I see a lot of boards that are high on patterns and right angles and low on variety. I like to keep stuff heavy in places, light in others, and just kind of fairly random and ramshackle. I'll make it sound like some kind of highbrow shit, but you could probably do as good a job as me by shutting your eyes, chucking it at the board, and just sticking it down wherever the fuck it lands. Another pass with the sculptor mold comes in here. This is to cement the scenery down both figuratively and literally. It wants to look like part of the thing. Not like plastic toys glued to a board, which, you know, Kel Surprise, that is what it is. And adding some gradient to the ground shape around the terrain is going to take care of blending it in nicely. Our ground forms are done, our trench is looking crusty, and there's apparently still some shit on my camera sensor. Let's move on to our ground covers. This is the final top deck on our Kill Team bus. So it's PVA glue mixed with black paint. And large materials go down first, factoring in where they'd naturally fall in a weathered environment.
and semi-finally a layer of regular sand to cover our board. This is sand from an actual beach. Uh, this is tedious. Okay, secret weapon time. Our final and debatably optional layer is Tile Grout. Tile Grout has an adhesive component built into it, but also makes for great 28mm scale mud. Sand is a little bit too chunky for me and can look like the gravel on your nan's driveway, but that's entirely preference. And as with all our scenics, we pre-wet the surface with a mixture of isopropyl alcohol and water to break that surface tension. So that when we come in with our water PVA mix to act as a sealant, it can penetrate the sand and grout and all that crap and fix absolutely everything in place. So the ground formations, the ground texturing, uh, all of the details are now on. And even though it's a bit of a fucking mess, you can see that, you know, if you wanted to do like a, a generic desert board, you could actually be quite happy. Uh, you wouldn't need to paint it, you just need to paint the details and put some weathering powder on. Um, and the colours are actually quite nice. So it's soaked, it's sealed, it's got a layer of black adhesive underneath. Given some time to dry, this shit ain't going nowhere. This whole thing is basically two layers of foam, and then everything above is just a thick wall of PVA, it's like whale blubber just on top of this fucking foam shape that I've got going on. Do I think some things are going to come loose? Yes, probably some of the larger, uh, some of the larger scatter might move a bit, but what I'll do is I'll just use a soft brush after it's dried to get anything loose off before we then start painting. So we know that when it comes to dry brushing this up, which is predominantly how we're going to paint it, uh, there ain't going to be any issues. Also took some pictures when the watered down PVA was pooling of where pools naturally occur on the, just the land formations where gravity takes it. And I think I'm going to treat myself to some puddles. I might put some puddles on there, see if that looks all right. So I'm going to take this boy upstairs. I would leave it in the back garden. It's a nice sun trap back garden. It's very hot today. However, I think I'm going to test my luck with the boys uh, and stick this on the skylight and leave it to fucking bake in the actual absolute sun. So let's go see how that goes down. <laughs> board has dried, took about two hours on the window. So the next step is to sand the edges down to get those edges flush, get all the crap off the plastic trim, and then I'm gonna go outside and prime it. Nice. So my theory for scratch painting boards is generally to start with a parent colour like black or dark brown and then work your way up. I'm starting with black, then I'm going to do a broad overbrush with blue black and some solvent spot highlights with grey here and there. Next I'm going to catch any raised areas with a medium grey. Any sharps or hard edges, get a light grey dry brush. But when it comes to diversity, you can add a little bit of everything provided you stipple or dry brush your gradients in properly. I say properly, do whatever you want. I'm gonna go with a ready brown to represent silts and muds and clay and taking time to work it into the environment. As my brush starts to run out of gas a little bit, I'll stipple towards the edges of the area I want to be muddy and ease that gradation in. Since I don't want anything to stick out too much, I'm going to pre-shade with light grey on the trench planks and on the dead death core, or just 
I guess they're just kind of death call, right? These are the paints and metallics that I'm going to use on the terrain and the death core. All right, fine, fuck off then. I'm not interested. Regular acrylic washes will work fine here, but I like the comfort of knowing I can remove a lot of this stuff with the white spirit at the end to brighten my terrain features back up if I need to. That's the great thing with enamels, especially for grimdark shit like this. Slap it on, let it dry, get some white spirit, and rub it off in the raised areas to bring some gradients back. Okay. <laughs> so I think for the most part, this board is done. The only thing I think... Cat hair on it, the cat doesn't even come here. That's impressive. I think the only thing that I really want to do now is finish the trim on the sides. I want to dry brush up the metals and the scenery just to make them pop a little bit more. I think if I'm feeling dangerous and a little bit frisky, I might add some puddles, some muddy puddles. So I'll do the bits, I'll do the other bits, and then I'll see how I feel about the water. Cool. So it's always squeaky bum time with resin, or Poundland Special resin especially, but since I last used this a few years ago, it has come quite a long way. The curing time has gone from like 5 seconds to about 30 minutes. Tint it with some inks, slap it on, work it in, and leave it to go off. Hopefully no dramas. And there we have it, my first board on the channel. Happy days. Any questions or processes you have questions about or recommendations, do let me know in the comments down below. And of course, big thank you to my Patreon community who continue to support the channel, especially during this brutal sponsor deadline period where I can't be around in the community as much as I'd like to be. And I'm going to see you all next time for a very, very special video where we reveal the MS Paints merchandise and an even more special returning face to the channel. Cheers, I'm out of here.